Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Thank you very much for attending the International Symposium for the inscription of Kintaikyo on the World Heritage List. I'm serving as the MC for this symposium. My name is Satoko Nomo. Pleased to meet you. Now, I uh, would like to begin the International Symposium for the inscription of Kintaikyo on the World Heritage List. At the outset, on behalf of the organizer of this symposium, the Kintaikyo uh, Bridge World Heritage Registration and Promotion Council Chairperson, uh, Mr. Tsugumasa Amura Oka, the Governor of Yamaguchi Prefecture, will welcome you. Good afternoon, everyone. And I am the uh, Mura Oka, serving as uh, the president of the council. And uh, on the opening of the Kintaikyo Bridge, uh, the conference, and I would like to say a few words of greeting uh, on behalf of the organizers. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizations involved in this council and the Kintaikyo Bridge World Heritage Expert Committee for their extraordinary efforts towards the inscription of Kintaikyo Bridge on the World Cultural Heritage List. Now, the Kintaikyo Bridge is a treasure shared by all humankind and we are working to preserve its value and charm for future generations by promoting understanding of its remarkable universal value and fostering mo momentum for its inscription on the World Cultural Heritage List in cooperation with related organizations. In this context, it is very significant for us that uh, today, on the occasion of the 350th anniversary of the construction of the Kintaikyo Bridge, we are holding an international symposium very close to the bridge, inviting renowned experts of ECOMOS, Dr. Angel Cabeza, Dr. Eleftheria Takanika, and Dr. Mikhail Landa, as well as the Japanese experts, including Dr. Yasuyoshi Okada, Professor Emeritus of Kokushikan University, and Dr. Martinez Alejandro, Assistant Professor of Kyoto Institute of Technology, to participate in the symposium. We expect to receive many valuable inputs from them uh, for the inscription of Kintaikyo Bridge on the World Heritage List. We will also link uh, these results uh, for the, of the discussion in the expert committee to solidify the value of Kintaikyo Bridge with its unique structure and scenic beauty unparalleled in the world and make further progress towards its inscription on the World Cultural Heritage List. We will disseminate information widely in order to gain the understanding of people, not only in Japan, but also the world over. In order to elevate uh, this wonderful Kintaikyo Bridge from a local treasure to a world treasure, the Council will do its utmost to increase the momentum for its inscription on the World Cultural Heritage List in cooperation with all related organizations. I would like to take this opportunity uh, by uh, asking you uh, for your continued uh, understanding and cooperation. Thank you very much and welcome. So, uh, on the occasion of this symposium, uh, we have received uh, telegram messages uh, from various sources. The messages that we have received through telegram so, are posted uh, on the wall uh, near the entrance uh, of the venue. And as we set the stage for the keynote lecture, please wait for a while. Thank you.
Now, I would like to begin with the keynote lecture. Uh, the keynote lecture will be delivered uh, by uh, uh, Dr. Mikkel Landa, who is the uh, expert member of Ecomos International Work Committee. I would like to briefly introduce uh, him to you. He's from uh, Spain. And he's an architect. Uh, for a long time, he has been engaged in protection and preservation of uh, the uh, wooden uh, structures specialized in wooden heritage. He was actually uh, they participated in many uh, repair projects. And he is also the past president of ECOMOS Advisory Committee as well as ECOMOS International Wood Communi uh, Committee. And he's going to talk on uh, his view on the authenticity, uh, authenticity of Kintakyo uh, from an international perspective. Uh, Mr. Landa, please. Well, I, uh, f first of all, I have to uh, – well, I'm a bit uh, overwhelmed by the invitation and um, because it's a bit um, – well, I'm, I'm in Japan speaking to Japanese about Japanese culture and I know very little of Japanese culture, so uh, forgive me for that. Uh, thank you for inviting. And well, uh, I will try to, the, to do my best, which is to help you on your uh, intention or your will of uh, going forward with this a wonderful bridge as uh, a candidate candidate for World Heritage. <coughs> if we go to the Venice Charter, which is the big document of, or is considered as such by some, uh, by many. We would read on Article 15 that all reconstruction work should, however, be ruled out a priori. This looks like uh, bad news. If we keep in mind just this document, then it would be difficult to understand what Kintakyo Bridge is and what Kintakyo Bridge can uh, can tell us or can transmit, but this is a document made in 16 in 1964 with a specific mentality, quite a European, quite uh, Western, which has been um, which has had quite changes in the uh, in the following years, starting by a. Um, the Burra Charter in 1979. Um, yes, this document requires interpretation when applied to wooden buildings. Um, it was thought for a different kind of heritage, and we have to take this into account. So, if we go to the Burra Charter in 1979, which is only a few years later, already reconstruction is permitted. But it's permitted where it is necessary for its survival or where it recovers the cultural significance of the place as a whole. So, well, we start changing the, our mind and we start accepting in a written document, in a relevant document, reconstruction as a, as a um, way of facing uh, the conservation of, of heritage. If we go further away, in 1994, there was the NARA conference on authenticity here in Japan. And the reason is because several national committees of ECOMOS were concerned that the Venice Charter was not wide enough to uh, understand, to justify the conservation of their heritage. It's US, it's Japan, and other countries. And because the heritage is mainly built with wood, and in many cases only with wood, or almost only with wood. So <clears throat> at that time, in just before 1994, uh, Nobuo Ito, Professor Nobuo Ito, Japanese, invited Knut Einar Larsen from Norway, and there was a reason for that, because uh, Knut uh, Larsen was 
is still alive, uh, Norwegian, and used to wooden heritage, because in the Scandinavian countries there is a lot of wooden heritage and they, they preserve it quite, quite well. So he came here, saw what, um, what Japanese uh, practitioners and, and administrations do with heritage, and once understood, he wrote a book which is really, really relevant, and I hope that it's uh, reprinted w one day, which is Architectural Preservation in Japan. It's a base, the philosophical base in which, uh, for, for, the, for the NARA document on authenticity. And the NARA document on authenticity says a few things. It's a very short document, but a very, very relevant document for the future since 1994, which is, it encourages to clarify the use of the concept of authenticity in each country and cultural context. So the context is relevant. Understand as universal the search of authenticity and recognizes that the different ways to understand and conserve authenticity are dependent on each cultural context. Depending on each cultural context. Then, in 2014, there was a NARA Plus 20 meeting and uh, concepts evolved. Uh, there were five, five, only five articles. One of them is diversity in heritage processes, which is very relevant for the bridge for Kintakio. The implications of, implications of the evolution of cultural values. So cultural values evolved and that was recognized on NARA, NARA Plus 20 and uh, other as involvement of multi multiple stakeholders, conflicting claims and interpretations um, on the role of cultural heritage and sustainable development. So the concept of heritage and how we manage heritage and how we uh, do the conservation of heritage is constantly changing and evolving. In the operational guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention, which is the document of UNESCO, and which is the base in which, which has to be, uh, which is kind of a guide for uh, doing the candidature process properly, the, the application properly, it's written that, that reconstruction is acceptable only on the basis of complete and detailed documentation. It's acceptable, but only in the case of complete and detailed documentation. And this is relevant for, for Kintakio. Some cases of reconstructions, the Mostar Bridge, it was, a, it, it was bombed and it fell down, so it was destroyed, and it was reconstructed quite quickly. And it was uh, included in 2005 in the, in, in the, inscribed in the World Heritage List. It's a case of reconstruction, and it's understandable that this case was inscribed on the World Heritage, World Heritage List. There was a reason for that. The same could be said with uh, Varsov, the center, historical center, in which 85% of the center was destroyed during World War II and was reconstructed and was included as World Heritage in 1980, years later. So in those cases, there is a reason for a reconstruction, which is mainly a crisis, human cost, a war. So in those cases, we can understand that it's understood and it's, uh, that a reconstruction, reconstruction can be a way of um, facing conservation of heritage. We come to Japan again, and um, Oh, sorry, it's not, it's not well written, it's disassembling and reassembling. I've changed in the last minute, sorry for that. Uh, Horioji, which is one of the most important monuments for you, for the Japanese, and also for other not, Jap not Japanese as myself. And it was inscribed in, in 1993, but the building has, been, has had a lot of interventions and um, in some cases it has been disassembled and then reassembled again. But well, that would be difficult to explain with the only document of the Venice Charter. Same thing with, with uh, Kishibogost, which is in Ru Russia, which is this beautiful church 
And you can see in the image that part of the church is sustained, in fact, by a metal structure, while the lower part of it has been already disassembled, re repaired and reassembled. And, this is, and there's a part missing. And that part which is missing, that, that's 2016, is on the uh, warehouse being on the, on the workshop, sorry, being repaired and would be put again in 2017, the following year, because it's wood. And wooden structures need a specific approach. It's in those cases, it's mainly due to material fragility. Wood needs a special care. If we go to China, to, to Tibet, in Yanjing, uh, this is not World Heritage, but it's a cultural landscape, with beautiful uh, work, um, salt works, in which the conservation strategy here is mainly use. And use makes the salt makers maintain, repair, sometimes reconstruct, sometimes adapt their structures. And it's the same place, it's the same site, is the is uh, Yanjing salt works, but it evolves, it's changed over time for a reason. If we go to Anyana Salt Valley, which is a case in which we, I've been working many years, for many years, it's quite similar. Terraces made of wood and clay, and the strategy is the same, use. If it's used, it's preserved. If it's not used, it falls down. So, <clears throat> in those cases, this is probably a too long explanation, but in those, in those cases, there's material fragility, as in Kishipogost and, and Horiuji, but also evolution, evolution of the society, evolution of the context, which forces to make changes. And those changes have to be understood. So we come here to the Kintakio. And there's a physical condition physical context, sorry, which is uh, very relevant to why things are done the way they are in Kintakio, which is extreme conditions. It, this is a bridge. It's a wooden bridge, mainly wooden, and it's exposed. It has no roof. It's exposed. And this is a rainy weather, so it rains, and it rains again, and it rains again, so wood gets wet and that causes damages because we have the um, wood is a material which is uh, fragile it can last long as Horyuji 1,300 years of if it's well kept well, well maintained but uh, rot happens decay happens and all that kind of things happen so you just have to take that into account when you build something when you uh, intervene in a wooden structure. So, if we go back in time at the beginning of the of Okintakio, the samurai engineer and the carpenters and all those that were involved on this in the 17th century, they knew this. They knew the conditions in which they were building a bridge and they knew the, uh, what, how the wood behaves in, in such conditions. So, they drew a plan. They thought, we have to do something with this. It's not like we do in, in, in my country. We build and we forget. No, we do a plan. So they did a plan. The conservation of heritage involves the recognition of the property as such, as heritage, at a certain point in time. And the consequent actions taken aim to convey its value to future generations. So we conserve heritage because it's heritage. It has been recognized as heritage. And then we take actions. Those actions are, can be different kinds. This is not the case of Kintakio. In the case of Kintakio, the plan for its conservation was drawn at the beginning. 
In the 17th century, they drew a plan, and that's Kintakyo Kakekai, if it's correct in the position of the words. It's a Kakekai system applied to a Kintakyo. They knew that they had to periodically work on the, let's say, work on the, on the, on the bridge. And that plan has been kept since. This is very relevant. It has been kept since. So you, you, the Iwakuni society, are keeping to the plan. And keeping to the original plan justifies authenticity of Kintakyo. So this is relevant. At a cost. Because they didn't choose the easy way. The drafters of the play didn't choose or the plan. Kakekai involves repair, involves reconstruction. The cost of each intervention is very significant. And the bridge has to be closed from time to time, so it doesn't, you cannot cross it. So that's a cost. There may be other costs, but those are quite evident. And there is a reward, there are many. One is the beauty of the bridge. It's, it was designed beautiful. It's been beautiful all the time. It's still beautiful. And it, it should be beautiful in the future. It's a structure that works as such. And it's usable. It's been used all the time. All the time, except when, Kintak when Kakekai. But all the rest of the time, it's been used by the people in, in Iwakuni. And now, today, by tourists, by ourselves. So it's been used. And there is an extraordinary involvement of the society of Iwakuni with the bridge. We can see it everywhere. If we go to a meeting, there are paintings of the bridge, the museum, any shop, you can see the bridge everywhere. We saw it now, just before. So imagine that we have a work of art which is reproducible. This is the first page of Symphony Number no. 9 of Beethoven, the Ode to Joy, well, the fourth movement. And uh, the identity of an allographic work is established by means of a notational scheme or by means of a notational system. Allographic works are potentially reproducible. And this piece of art can be reproducible, can be played once and again by different orchestras. So we have the notation system, which is the sheet music, which we're seeing now, and there are the pentagram, the notes, the um, indications of, uh, yeah, here on top, presto, allegro, moderato, and that's how to play, which instruments have to play that work of art. And then, then it's a work, which is the symphony itself, which is nowhere. You hear it, it's not physical. So if we return to Kintakyo, the, the identity of Kintakyo is established as soon as 1699, probably before, but the first drawings are from 1699, by means of a notational system consisting basically in the original technical drawings. Let me tell them not just drawings, but technical drawings, because they have a, an intention, a clear intention, which is build a bridge. The templates, the drawings on top, the templates in the middle, which are the uh, needed by the carpenters to mark the wood, to cut the wood at the proper dimensions, <clears throat> and the rulers. <coughs> Sorry. So the notation system are the technical drawings, the wooden templates, the rulers. And the work 
is the bridge. So it's physical. It's not a symphony. It's a bridge. So it's a material thing. Which is, we should, I think we should forget about sp speaking about original material. It's not relevant here. We should, speak up, we should be speaking about material authenticity, whether the bridge is authentic or not. It can be authentic without the material being the original, because it was never thought to be to last forever with the same material. That was, that was not the plan. So the sequence of repetitions of the Kintaki or Kakekae include 14 technical drawings, which are the 12 that you always say, plus the 1950, plus the 2002, and there will be another one in a few years' time, starting in 1699 until the last repetition in 2002. Consistency on the sequence of drawings and template, templates is needed to confirm the quality of the performance of the original plan. If we have 14, a sequence of 14 technical drawings and they are changing constantly, then there's no plan. If we have 14, a sequence of 14 drawings which are almost the same, accurate, and the changes are intentional and for a reason, then there is consistency. And that gives a lot of, um, let's say, weight to the uh, justification of authenticity of the, of the bridge, or the notational system in this case. And the quality of each one of the performances each time the orchestra plays Beethoven Ninth Symphony, each time the carpenters of Iwakuni with engineers and with the people performs the kakekai, the quality of that performance can be measured by elements such as the wood species, the metallic elements, their design, their form, their position, their, the geometry of the elements, the sequence of the construction, and the final result. Um, this, I'm, I'm finishing now. Um, obviously, this is much more complicated and much more, but uh, Eleftheria Tsakanika and uh, Angel Cabeza will explain different aspects of it. I'm concentrated on, on material authenticity of the, of the bridge. This is a, a cultural landscape and has a lot of other, or of other values. But for me, this is, this is it. Arigato. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Lander, and thank you very much for coming all the way to Iwakuni from your country. Please accept our sincerest appreciation. Thank you very much for your contribution. So uh, we're going to start panel discussion. Uh, let me introduce today's coordinator, uh, Assistant Professor, Institute of, Kyoto Institute of Technology, Dr. Martinez Alejandro, is going to serve as a uh, uh, coordinator for the panel discussion. Now I'd like to introduce our panelists, uh, Dr. Elefteria Tsukanika. Uh, let me introduce uh, Elefteria Tsukanika uh, Dr. Elefta Tsukanika, excuse me, and she's from uh, Greece, and she's a uh, natural uh, associ uh, associate professor uh, for uh, National Technical University of Aysen, and also uh, she has been specialized in wooden structure, and at ECOMAS, like uh, uh, Dr. Landa, she's an expert member of IIWC, ECOMAS International Wood Committee, and uh, Dr. Angel Cabeza, uh, he's from Chile, and uh, uh, Dr. Cabeza uh, is now uh, serving as a director of the heritage of the municipality of Santiago and vice president of the Inter Intangible Heritage Committee of ECOMOS, and uh, he was uh, uh, 
the uh, technical representative of Chile for uh, World Heritage uh, Committee. And uh, Dr. Mikel Randa, who uh, gave us a keynote of sports, uh, speech, and then uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Okada Yasuyoshi, who is the uh, Professor Emeritus at Kokushikan University, and uh, Dr. Nishi Kazuhiko, uh, who is a Chief Senior Specialist for Cultural Property for the Agency of Cultural Affairs. Now, uh, Dr. Martinez, please take the floor. So I am uh, 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 Martinez Alejandro from uh, Kyoto Institute of Technology. I'm going to be a coordinator for the panel discussion. Before starting the panel discussion, uh, following the uh, uh, Dr. Mikel Randa, keynote speaker, uh, we have the international experts, uh, Dr. Angel Cabeza and uh, Dr. Leftoria Tsukanika. Uh, so including a self-introduction, uh, so because the, uh, for, uh, you have made a site visit for the last two days, uh, Kintaikyo Bridge and also surrounding uh, environment. So I'd like to ask two of you uh, to uh, share with us uh, your impression based upon your site uh, uh, visit. So starting with uh, Dr. Cabeza, would you please Mr. Governor of Yamaguchi, Mr. Govern Mr. Mayor of the city of Iwakuni, good afternoon, everybody. First, I want to thank the authorities of the city of Iwakuni for this kind invitation. It is a great honor for my person to participate in this seminar about the heritage significance of the Vikintakio Bridge. I hope to collaborate with you looking for answers about why this bridge is so important for your community, your nation, and the world. Professor Takachi Okuma said time ago, the Kintaku Bridge is a bridge full of wonders and contrasts, a place where fragility and eternity have a permanent dialogue. Fragility and eternity are two substantial aspects of heritage. Heritage can be fragile and also eternal. It depends on the ability of each society to discover and value the significance of their past. Heritage is the memory of the future that we must preserve, be aware what we must keep and what to change for the development and the happiness of the people. What is heritage for a community? Why the heritage is so important to us? Heritage is the best of our nature, landscapes, traditions, and culture. It's what we love and what to want to preserve for the future generations. Heritage is represented by objects, sites, mountains, forests, monuments, traditional architecture, knowledges, practices and skills, art, music, dance, handicraft and beliefs. Heritage is integrated by material and spiritual component of each society. Heritage provides meanings for the life of every person and community. Heritage gives understanding, values, and keep united the people. Heritage is the link between generations. Heritage creates and maintains the cultural identity, memories, and the dreams of every community. Who is speaking to you? And I was very honored to be here with you, invited to this seminar to share with you some experiences about nomination, protection, and management of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. There are many cases of success, many failures, but all countries learn from both. I come from Chile, a South America country, very far away from you, but we are connected for the force of the nature, earthquakes, tsunamis, rain, snowstorms, which give us a special understanding of our environment, geography, and influences our culture. I am an archaeologist, 
and a PhD in architecture and heritage. My professional experience is in national parks, national monuments, teaching in some universities, and as a national director of heritage of my country, as a technical representative of Chile in the World Heritage Committee for many years. And right now, at the end of my professional life, I am the director of heritage of the municipality of the city of Santiago, the capital of Chile. Also in ICOMOS, uh, in, uh, I am the vice president of the Intangible Heritage Committee yeah, of the Council of Monuments and Sites, an agency that works with UNESCO in the World Heritage Convention. My experience is, of course, in heritage, helping nominations and also evaluation of the World Heritage Sites. The concept of World heritage is in constant change and expansion. It's not a frozen concept. In the 20th century, the heritage was focused in material aspect of culture and not given the real significance to the intangible aspect of heritage. In the last decades, two new ideas or concepts were incorporated in the philosophy of the conservation of heritage. First, the integration of the natural and cultural heritage, for example, in one category like cultural landscapes, and second, a new understanding of the links between tangible and intangible cultural heritage. This means that the material and the spiritual aspect of heritage sites must be integrated to understand the values of a site and how to make possible and sustainable management. The challenge to find the spirit and the intangible heritage of the site. In this case, the Japanese experience was very important at international level to understand this. First, the NARA document about heritage authenticity of 1993, an international meeting organized by Japan to understand the oriental philosophy about heritage conservation and 2003, the UNESCO Intangible Heritage Convention, thanks to the vision of Japan and the director of UNESCO, Dr. Koichiro Matsura. And third, the documents and meetings of ICOMOS to guide professionals about these new issues, like, like the last one was in Saudi Arabia one month ago, uh, held by the Royal Commission of Heritage in the World Heritage Site of Alula. What are the new trends in World Heritage Sites of UNESCO? First, a permanent review of the concept of the cultural significance, the authenticity and integrity. Western concepts of heritage must include cultural diversity and visions of different regions of the world. The World Heritage List must be balanced, including new types of properties, new sacred places of nature, industrial sites, engineering work as bridges, water systems, cultural landscapes, and other heritage sites that listed by UNESCO so far. The active participation of communities and local authorities in the conservation and the heritage management as a key process for the renewal of their identities and the concept of heritage for the development and progress of the people. The Convention of World Heritage Sites from 1972 is one of the most successful international conventions of UNESCO. There are right now 1,121 World Heritage Sites. 167 countries participate of this convention. And Japan is one of the leaders. It has 25 heritage sites and a great prestige in its protection and conservation. We have to remember always that the main objective of the UNESCO Convention is international cooperation for the protection of the world heritage sites that have outstanding universal values. To be in the World Heritage List of UNESCO, it is an honor and also a responsibility. All countries 
must follow a procedure. This procedure is first to define the significant and universal values of the heritage sites, second, to explain the authenticity and integrity of the heritage site, third, develop a master plan or system of management for the conservation of the site, and four, present real interest, demonstrate real interest and support of the community, the local and the national authorities. One of the key aspects of the convention is the cultural significance of the World Heritage Sites. It means to find all heritage values of the site. First, historical evidence, social aspects, scientific data, architectonic and archaeological values explain how the environment and the landscape are integrated in the site and discover the beauty and the spirit of the place. The concept of authenticity in the world where sites is, a, is an impermanent tension to understand the originality of the site and the preservation, restoration, and management. For example, already Michael Landa explained two ex examples. For example, the declaration of Varsau as a World Heritage Site in 1980. The historic center of this city was destroyed during the war, and the main arguments of UNESCO for encryption were it was an example of architectural reconstruction and the will of the Polish people to rescue their history and identity. The second example is the Mostar Bridge in Bosnia, Zerovina, in 2005. And this bridge was built in 1557 and destroyed during the war. And main arguments for the encryption for UNESCO were the willingness of the Christian and Muslim communities to live in peace and the quality of the reconstruction process. I have some examples of my country that can enlighten some of the questions here. Uh, our main problem in my country was how to represent the identity and diversity of the country. Why heritage sites to select and how to determine their significance heritage. And we use the UNESCO World Heritage Convention to raise awareness of heritage among citizens the local communities and the national authorities. And the main focus was in the process, not in the goal. The authenticity and integrity of many sites are in constant problem in my country. For example, deterioration, destruction, questionable restoration, expansion of the cities, etc. But we focus our contribution to the history of the humanity and that we have something important to show to the world. To select the sites, we define three criteria, the, the geographical, the historical, and the cultural. And with this information, we made our tentative list. Yeah, and also participating in then the academic and political yeah, process with experts, leaders, and the importance of the community, the local communities. We are going to show you two examples how the authenticity and integrity yeah, were a problem in these two nominations that right now are a one heritage sites. The Easter Island in the middle of the Pacific and the uh, wooden churches in the southern Chile and Patagonia. In the Eastern Island World Heritage Site was declared as a World Heritage Site in 1995 and the most of the ceremonial centers with the stone status were destroyed by the local population centuries ago due to a social and a religious revolution. The early restorations 50 years ago, yeah, they used uh, techniques that alter the authenticity and integrity of many monuments. In many cases, we use cement but in recent decades, new techniques and materials were incorporated and a management plan and a conservation was developed, thanks to the support of the director of UNESCO, Dr. Koichiro Matsura, and the government of Japan. The second example yeah, was the wooden churches in the Patagonia. 
and UNESCO recognized the ancestral beliefs and techniques of the community in rebuilding their wooden churches because in the last four centuries, many of them were destroyed by fires, storms, earthquakes, and tsunamis. And the deterioration of the landscape was also another problem that in, because the environment was destroyed surrounding the, the churches. But UNESCO recognized that the participation of the community in the conservation of the churches and the maintain the sense of the community relationship with its religious heritage. How to define the significance of the authenticity of the Kintaikyo Bridge? How to discover the values of the bridge and its local landscape? We have to consider aspects of heritage significance of the bridge. First, the definition of the heritage values and meanings, for example, the archaeological aspect, the historical, architectonical, engineering, social, aesthetic, economic, and environment. Also, we have to focus the process of the formation of the heritage site, the passes of time, and the feelings of the community in the last centuries. We have to look for all the sources, information to understand the heritage site and the local traditions and activities about the bridge, the river, close monuments and in history, and working together expert authorities and the people, and understand and integrate the economic factors that, that is always around this World Heritage Site, like the city planning, the tourism, the development projects. When we look about the aspect of the authenticity and integrity of the bridge, we have to look at something very important, not only the materiality, but also the design, the structure, and the techniques of construction and reconstruction. We have to look for the use and the function of the bridge, traditions, location, and landscape. And we have to discover the spirit and feeling of the community about the bridge. We must present all aspects of the heritage values of the site and explore new heritage values. We must establish the link between significance, values, authenticity. And we must explain the principle that heritage at first should be evaluated within its own cultural, natural, material, and historical context. We have give you some recommendations about the significance of the authenticity and heritage values yeah, of the Kintaiko Bridge. First, the Kintaiko Bridge must, be, have, must have the highest legal protection in Japan and be included in the tentative list of the World Heritage Sites of your country. The information provided mainly highlights technical characteristics of the bridge, architecture, engineering, materiality, history of construction and reconstruction, and other civil works of the river. Such information is of high technical quality and is linked to comparative study with other bridges in the world, which give excellent foundation for its universal value in terms of a remarkable work of architecture and engineering. However, it is necessary to provide more information and better explanation of the significance of the bridge from the point of view of the historical connectivity of both river banks, the history of the Iwakuni city and the region, and Japan. It is necessary more and better information about the local, social, cultural, recreational, and economic importance of the bridge and the river for the community, as well the landscape in both sides of the river and the city of Iwakuni. Also give more importance to the intangible values associated with the heritage, with the bridge and the river, like, as I have seen, festivals, art, traditional, fishing, and so on. 
the explanation of the British importance to the economic, social, and political development of the Wakuni city and the region in the past, present, and future must be highlighted with more information and data. All this work and arguments must be done with the participation of the local community and their leaders, experts, and the political authorities of the city, region, and the country. Final thoughts about this. The inscription of a site on the tentative list and then as a World Heritage Site of Japan should be understood as a process of planning with economical and political support. The most important thing is the permanent work of protection, conservation, and management of the site in the favor of the community and the future generations. In this process, technical, social, and political levels are fundamental and must be integrated to achieve success. Discovering and explaining the cultural significance, the sense or spirit of the heritage site for the local community, the country, and mankind is the key of the process and a fundamental communication tool. The heritage promotion of the Kintaiku Bridge in many ways, like as you have done in museum, the Heritage Day of the Bridge, music, poetry, legends, and are essential aspects of the project. And this process must be done with the collaboration of UNESCO and the advisory institutions such as ICOMOS, ICROM, and the countries that are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Committee always, and we, we must have always present that UNESCO is a technical and also a political institution integrated by the countries. They make the decisions. And finally, we have to explain in a very simple technical and emotional way how the Kintaiku Bridge illuminates the collective memory of the people of Iwakuni and how your bridge is a contribution to the history and heritage yeah, of the world and also of Japan. Thank you so much, Ari Tago. Thank you very much, Dr. Kabeta. Then now let us welcome the uh, Dr. Eleftheria Tsukanika. Dear representatives of the local authorities, dear colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen of Igaokuni City, I would like to thank you all and I'm really honored for inviting me in Igaokuni and be member of your wonderful team that is working so enthusiastically and so efficiently for the inscription of the bridge to, uh, in the Kentucky, of the Kentucky Bridge. Um, my experience, I am a civil engineer. I am associate professor in the School of Architecture of National Technical University of Athens in Greece. My experience is in timber structures, in uh, modern design of timber structures, and in restoration of historic ones. Also, uh, I, I would like to uh, help you, I will try to uh, uh, help you in your effort through my experience uh, as evaluator for um, the on-site mission uh, concerning the inscription in the World Heritage List of the 16 Timber Orthodox Churches Cerkvas in Poland and Ukraine. You see some of them. It's a unique uh, uh, cultural heritage. In, uh, in, in two countries, it's a serial nomination on the mountains, hidden, timber churches, eight in Poland and eight in Ukraine. In these churches, there was a completely different mentality from here. All of them were covered with wooden shingles, either on the side or on the roof, that were changed every 20 years, as you see here, 
being a sacrificing material in order to save the, load, the timber load-bearing system, which is behind and magnificent. It's not just a load-bearing system. It's also painted and decorated with, with exceptional uh, Byzantine-type um, um, paintings. And all of them are designed and protected from the external conditions, not only from the shingles, but also from some special details, like you see here, like the mini skirt at the end of the church, or the maxi skirt, in order to uh, save the timber structure, the load-bearing system, which is inside. For me, it was a lifetime experience because, of course, as a structural engineer, I, I was focused uh, on, on the structure, but also it provided me historical framework, the framework, all this uh, experience on site about these properties that were created and evolved in uh, specific conditions, and it was very valuable and enriched me as a scientist and as a person. The same feeling I have here, too. Being there, the evaluator who is going uh, on site after the um, uh, nomination file is given to, uh, to ECOMOS has, has a task to make an, uh, a, a report on, on, on what he sees there. Thankfully, these properties were um, inscribed in the list uh, in, 2000, in uh, 2013, all of them, um, and uh, it, was, uh, it, it was very important for their countries. It is one of the most important things that uh, somebody who is working on a nomination file, as you already uh, know and showed us, is the criteria for the outstanding universal value. And you have already worked on it and selected three of them. We have to see if there are these exceptional qualities in order to have this outstanding, to prove these outstanding universal values. And these were the main questions from you to us about the uh, uh, outstanding universal values and about the authenticity concerning the Kitakio Bridge. The first one, which is, which is to represent a masterpiece of human creative active genius, it's rather easy for um, Kintakyo Bridge because you know it already, it's unique. Never built before, never built again in another location in Japan or the rest of the world. Unique in numbers, only one. Unique in conception, only once this conception. The Japanese people of Iwakuni have constructed in the 17th century the only timber arced bridge in the world. And I must add, as a structural engineer, that it is a timber bridge of such dimensions. It's about 40 meter span. It's not easy. Kentucky Bridge also is an innovation in timber bridge engineering. Innovation, the main load-bearing conception. Innovation, also the reinforcing system that very, from the beginning, uh, it was uh, found since uh, 16, 1699. Reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing the bridge. And it's, so, it's rather interesting that you gave special names for these elements. The use of metal fastener, another exceptional characteristic that I think it's not common for Japanese architecture. But it is, seems that it, it is necessary to make a compact timber arc. Another exceptional characteristic, the ground seal and the pavement, old as the bridge, as I understood from your um, um, presentations. Another innovation and exceptional characteristic for the protection of the piers. Not so often, at least in my country, I have never seen it. It's also, except the reinforcement, an important value of the landscape around the bridge, connected with the bridge. 
since it also gives the opportunity to walk around and mainly under the bridge and be able to see its magnificent structure. We learned these days that the original embankment of the river, constructed at the 17th century before the bridge, is still standing and preserved. We think that a part of it at least. We think that it is a very important part of the history of the bridge, and for this it must be highlighted to and be connected to the bridge. Kintakyo Bridge is valuable also because very few bridges in the world heritage are made of timber. Most of them are stone. In my country, there is no timber bridge. All of them are stone. This is one a bridge in my country exactly the same span of uh, Kintakyo Bridge, 40 meters, the biggest span in Balkans, which in 2015 collapsed. This is, we did a lot of work with my university in order to uh, study the restoration of this bridge, which immediately uh, was reconstructed and finished in 2020. It's not in the World Heritage List, but it's, it's a, a, a stone bridge. Concerning the nomination file, you have to make a comparative analysis of properties that are related to yours. How many stone bridges are there in other countries, timber ones? And this helps in order to um, find out the importance of your, of your, of your uh, demand. So in this comparative analysis, I think you have an advantage because as uh, uh, we discussed and Professor Lander told us, only two bridges are inscribed in the UNESCO list, two. One from stone, one from metal, and we hope one of timber, this one. The second outstanding value is to bear a unique or at least exceptional testimony to a cultural tradition or to a civilization which is living or which has disappeared. Kintakyo Bridge comp comprises tangible elements as well as intangible ones. Kakikai system, spun by Spal Renewal, is unique. The technique even has a special name. It is a continuous, repetitive rebuilding not reconstruction. We will uh, speak about later about it. And even if it sounds strange or oxymoron, it is the exceptional characteristic of this case, the key to understand the outstanding universal value and the authenticity of the Kintaiki Bridge. It happened 42 times, at least, partially, and about 16 um, as a whole bridge. The intangible values, there is a unique historic system of continuous education and training of craft, craftsmen's techniques, a historic know-how transfer of the specific techniques, not other ones, not the general techniques, the specific techniques for the construction of an arced timber bridge. As, as we found out, the local carpenters formed a team aimed to help on this, um, on this task. And I think not so many that are, exist now. We had the privilege in our meeting, in our meeting here to uh, meet uh, the master carpenter of the bridge. You can see him here. That explained us a lot of things. And he also explained us that even he has special tools for the specific bridge, for the specific joint. A unique historic system of documentation and recording of a traditional building technique or technology that safeguards the, this heritage. Dr. Landa has spoken about it. A unique historic system of documentation through the centuries. With drawings, with tablets, with rulers. I don't know if there is somewhere else in the world that exists such kind of documentation. 
Now going to authenticity has several criteria also the authenticity for and design material using function, traditions, location, language, spirit and feeling. Format and design, I think, if we make a score, you could have nine or ten. Although, as uh, Professor Martinez is saying, although improvements have been made through this history, the form and design remains unchanged, and historical documents and templates provide this evidence, as I said before. Because it will, we could have a question, is it really a 10, the form and design? Because in the 20th century, in 1950, we have changes. We have concrete on the piers, we have metal bases for the timbers, but even in the Venice chapter, it says that valid contributions of all periods to the building of a monument must be respected since unity of style is not the aim of restoration. But the Kong also, they had another, uh, um, uh, another change. They made the piers higher one meter. And this was a wise decision, as I see from your documentation, because it is exactly the height that needed to destroy the, the, the bridge very recently. In monuments, we have to reinforce them for earthquakes, for floods, for other hazards. Improvement and reinforcement is a part of their evolution of the monuments, and of, they have a historic value. The first one in your case in, happened in 1699. The last ones in 1950 and 2000 happened recently. But when we, we consider them, we, we, we don't understand, we, we don't consider them as the old ones because we live now. But after 100 years, it will be another historical reinforcement. In Parthenon, the rusted iron clamps are changed with clamps of titanium because some things have to change. It's needed for the safety of the structure. Concerning use and function, it's 10 clear. You know it very well. Location and setting, probably 10 or 9. You have incredible documentation with ancient maps about the location and the setting. But there is a small problem about the lo location and the setting. It's the, the use of parking, the parking just next to the monument. And um, uh, you know, when we go on, on, on the assignment, we have this buffer zone and we check how is the buffer zone, how is the area around the, 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 the the monument, it, and, it's, and it's something that uh, is evaluated. So this could be improved in your case, but I know, as, uh, as the um, mayor told us yesterday, that you already have done things about it. And you know, you don't, when an evaluator comes, it's not necessary to be finished. Even if it's under program, it's, it's okay. Spirit and feeling, okay, again 10. The involvement of the local community into the process of protection is, here is very high. Kintakyo Breeze is everywhere. It is the symbol and the spirit of the city. Even last night, you see, uh, when we had that uh, uh, party, welcome party, it was on the walls. Here is behind everywhere. Artists, festivals. So when we have so big scores, what about material? I think that this is the big question, and that's what we are all thinking about. But we don't have the material because we have reconstruction. And if you see the, the site of UNESCO about the reconstruction, there are cases, as uh, uh, Dr. Landa um, uh, 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 has presented just before, there are cases, not many, but there are. 
a, a key point is the role of the local community, as Anki said, uh, and how important it is for, that, for them. Another key point is the material itself. If you see here, reconstruction, they're thinking, we're thinking in UNESCO, is a good option for conserving earthen architecture. Why they do that? Because earthen architecture, as timber architecture, is very vulnerable, as Dr. Landa said. So, in this case, the reconstruction in Kitagyo Bridge is not reconstruction as in most. It, we have to find a new, a new, a new term. It is a completely new and different approach for the preservation of architectural heritage. It is a continuous one. It's a continuous reconstruction, a continuous um, rebuilding. The authenticity in this case is hidden in the original design decisions of the builders, different from the dismantling and reassembling that includes the replacement and reconstruction of the bridge or parts of the bridge, the Kakikai. After severe damages, with exactly the same original authentic technique and the same material, that's the key word, the same material. Not the original, but the same, because in this case, it is not possible to have the original material. It's the nature of, 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 the, of the structure. It is a bridge, it's a structure not protected by coverings and the shingles and the roofs, as I showed you, in, uh, in Poland and Ukraine, exposed to the most severe conditions and hazards, falls, floods, decay, and the specific system is not designed to be disassembled and reassembled, many nails, etc. Kintakyo Bridge is in the same location, destroyed of the same natural hazards, decay and floods, for four centuries. In any other place of the world, it would have been replaced by stone bridge after the first destruction. And this is the great importance, since it shows the roots of timber technology in Japanese culture, and especially in Iwakuni, the effort and the willingness to change the traditional methods and invent a unique structural system, the timber arc bridge, to face the floods, a unique system to face the, the, the decay, and even more to accomplish a quick and easy recovery of the original system, the Arctic Bridge, a quick and easy recovery of the local community every, uh, after the damage and the problem. For me, it was rather emotional and moving, the decision of so many generations of the people of Iwakuni, again and again, to rebuild the timber bridge, their timber bridge. They faced this dilemma not one, not two times, 42. It was a part of their life, and it is a part of your life that you have to transmit to next generations, and you are doing a great job. This is the spirit and the feeling of the people which gives the highest value in the property for the nomination. Thank you. Nice talk. Thank you very much, Dr. Takanika. And now, uh, so based on uh, Dr. Landa's uh, presentation, also the based on uh, Dr. Cabezas and uh, Dr. Takanika's presentations, we would like to receive comments uh, from the participating uh, the Japanese uh, experts, uh, Professor Okada and uh, Dr. Nishi. And uh, Professor Okada and uh, Dr. Nishi, how about uh, your views on these uh, three presentations? Thank you. I am Okada, and so it's my great pleasure to uh, receive uh, valuable inputs uh, from the three experts from abroad. And so they are quite supportive uh, to our yes, uh, endeavors, and so their presentations were all encouraging to us, and especially uh, today. The main theme is uh, the authenticity of uh, Kentaikyo Bridge. And this is uh, the, one of the biggest concerns that we have about Kentaikyo Bridge. And 
So as uh, uh, Dr. Takaniga said earlier, and so, so, I think the uh, within our community there are yes a little bit of a misunderstanding. So people tend to think you know the thing has to be a real uh, a thing. So, uh, so when uh, so when you think uh, it is authentic, and so people tend to just uh, simply uh, uh, understand it as having to be uh, the original yes uh, in the first state. But then uh, Dr. Tsakanika, uh, the, uh, the uh, precisely explained that the authenticity is not only about uh, being original. And so uh, the other two uh, experts also uh, explained to us uh, that, so what supports uh, the uh, properties of uh, authenticity is, uh, so that authenticity is that the site or the heritage uh, cannot be replaced by anything else. So that includes the process uh, through the many uh, years in the human history and the system that has been developed uh, through the history. Uh, and those are the things that support authenticity. So uh, their input uh, so, uh, were seen uh, so, uh, as common uh, as a viewpoint uh, from these uh, uh, three experts. So Kintai Kyo, uh, so although it has gone through many kakekai processes in the history, so therefore that would became a concern uh, uh, for us. So that was a big uh, impression uh, for me. For me, and if uh, so, if I may, so ask uh, further questions. Uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, the following, and so uh, starting with uh, Dr. Landa, and so, so I think the uh, the people in the audience, uh, so. Uh, uh, became a little bit uh, this, uh, this uh, surprised uh, that uh, so he used uh, the example of uh, the, uh, the 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 ode of joy of Beethoven. <laughs> so uh, ode of joy uh, of uh, by uh, Beethoven is a symphony uh, which is loved and sung by many Japanese people, especially towards the end of the year, and you can hear a lot of people uh, singing uh, in chorus and. So, so you uh, used uh, he used uh, this as allographic. Uh, the term that was used was allographic, and so this is not a familiar term for many of us. But uh, so, but as was listening to him, I have come to understand that uh, so uh, the Symphony Nine so has gone through uh, many centuries. And it has been played again and again. However, so it has not uh, lost uh, its uh, uh, vivid uh, the, uh, this uh, charm of the, the tunes. So, when we look at uh, the this uh, uh, world heritage, and so we may be able to consider allographic uh, nature uh, of uh, uh, the property. So probably. So uh, you have uh, given us a very good uh, example, and so I would like to know. So if there are any properties, uh, uh, so that would uh, that would be uh, the, the cited as a good example of allographic uh, property, and so and then uh, my question, next question uh, is for uh, Dr. Cabeza, and uh, so the spirituality and then the element of the uh, the model, and uh, and so in Chile. And so you have uh, wooden structures uh, used as church, and there are some uh, disasters like fires, and those had to go through reconstruction. Uh, so and then they had to yes uh, make some of the arrangements and coordinations with the communities, and had to delve uh, in the the, the past uh, records uh, of the structure, and handing down the the engineering techniques uh, of uh, building uh, of uh, the the churches and. So I would not. I would like to know oh, what kind of uh, the uh, the challenges that people had to face with, and what kind of documents uh, served uh, as the the powerful uh, document to support uh, the allegation of authenticity. And, and uh, the the two Dr. Takanika, and uh, so I would like to ask her. And so you're from Greece, and uh, I visited your country many times. And and I went. I went to Parthenon, uh, uh, the palace, uh, the uh, the ruins, and so in the last uh, ten or twenty years, and uh, so no, that uh, the uh, property is uh, closed uh, to uh, the the tourists because uh, so it has to go through uh, the uh, 
uh, the reconstruction or the repair process. But when I w went there, I could go inside, step inside. So, so I still f uh, have a fond memory of it. And I have my uh, question. So in order to, uh, to maintain the value of Parthenon, and so probably uh, so the, the local communities have uh, done uh, the, the additional uh, uh, the studies, uh, the examinations, and reinforcement and works. And so in that case, uh, so Parthenon, so, so the original part of the structure is very important for uh, Parthenon. So to what extent uh, as, so are we allowed to, uh, to give additions or reinforcement to the structure? So in reality, like uh, you said that the, the joint uh, was made uh, of uh, titanium instead of the old uh, materials. And so to what extent uh, are we allowed to alter the, the materials uh, for uh, the uh, use for uh, the uh, reconstruction? or repair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Okada. And I would like to, yes, uh, to ask uh, Dr. Landa so, yeah, in this order to an answer uh, Dr. Okada's question. Well, um, regarding the other examples of holographic buildings, a, there is, I would say there is no building which is only holographic. Um, holographic are uh, Allographic means that the work uh, is, can be repeat, repeated, is re repetitive. It means repetition, and for that repetition, we need a notation system. Um, a piece of mu music is allographic. But um, works of architecture, of engineering, are both allographic and autographic. Autographic are those works that cannot be repeated. Imagine a painting, Mona Lisa or whatever painting you can imagine, and the painter takes the brush um, and puts a color and then another and then another, and then the painting is finished. This cannot be repeated. It's one work of art. Um, architecture has both sides, allographic and autographic. There's a notation system, there's a project which the architect or the engineer does and gives the clues of how to do the building. But usually buildings are not repeated. Um, but they are autographic because the, the history of the production is one. Those brushes that the painter does is what the mason or the carpenter put materials on the building or the house or the temple and build it. So it's, a, it's complex. In the case, in the specific case of um, Dakio, it has a very relevant allographic site. And it's the repetitiveness, it's the um, kakekae system. That's the allographic part. And the repetition of the building once and again could be compared, not in an exact way, but could, could be compared to um, the performance of a, of a song, of a symphony. Um, I don't think there are many cases like uh, like uh, Kintakio um, as an allographic example with such an allographic um, power. One of them could be uh, is uh, is a shrine. I don't know if there are others. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kabesa. And uh, Chiroe, uh, the, uh, uh, the wooden structure, and uh, what is the document that supported the, uh, the authenticity of that uh, structure? Documents from the last 400 years about the design of the churches. 
The only that we have was the experience of the local carpenters that transmit that generation by generation their expertise. All these local carpenters are carpenters of the sea. They made boats. So the experience of carpentry in the seashore was very important, but no written documents about this experience. Yeah, the problem started when UNESCO declared these churches as a World Heritage Sites because we have and we need documents yeah, to show this and the local carpenters have to work with the university architects. And the problems start there. How to deal, and it was a sociological and anthropological uh, way to work within people that they have a way to see the architecture and people that have a professional uh, skill about this. But they are working together right now, and I think that we are initiating our own Kakakai system for the restoration of the wooden churches of Patagonia in southern Chile. And uh, Takanika, uh, Dr. Takanika, and uh, what kind of discussions took place uh, when the uh, the, the reinforcement uh, the project had to be started? Concerning reinforcements, the minimum, the minimum that is necessary for the safety of the monument and the visitors. Because the problem are earthquakes, problem are the damage that uh, happened on the marbles because of old uh, last century reinforcements with uh, material that causes problems with the metal, which causes problems to the marbles. So the minimum that is needed for the safety of the monument. But concerning another part, which is called anastylosis, especially for Parthenona, which is not repair, it's not, recon it's not reconstruction, it's not restoration. We have another word, a Greek word, put ana, stylo, we put back in the place of the column. And this means that uh, we, we reconstruct or uh, anast make anastylosis of um, uh, a part of the structure putting back some stones that are missing and we find on site. So and this depends uh, from other criteria. Um, and it has other limits, which uh, have to do with historical, uh, archeological, uh, and aesthetical reasons. What is, um, rarely we do reconstruct the whole structure, especially for Parthenon, there are th members that are uh, anastilothka, we don't use the words uh, uh, reconstruction. And uh, what is uh, um, the rule is that there is no rule in monuments. Each case is uh, different and uh, unique, and you have to face each case with another um, um, point of view, depending of its character, of its uh, special um, uh, values, uh, which is also this case in Kentucky Obis. Each case is uh, different. Thank you very much. And now, uh, the, uh, uh, Dr. Nishi, and I would like to receive your comments uh, on the three experts' presentations. If you have any questions, please ask them. So I am Nishi speaking uh, today. So I have been able to listen to a presentation with a lot of example, and uh, there is a comparison to the music. So in a way, uh, this kind of information is uh, philosophical. Uh, but the, uh, in order to uh, proceed with the uh, candidature for our heritage, uh, there are some uh, specific uh, problems we have to uh, cope with. Uh, but uh, pre presentation does include such uh, uh, useful advices uh, for us to uh, cope with uh, such uh, problems like uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, parking space. But the, uh, today's theme is the authenticity from the international perspective. Of course, the uh, keynote speeches and the presentation by the international expert have touched upon uh, the authenticity as well, and uh, as well as the Dr. Okata touched upon the authenticity. So let me make, however, a supplement, uh, give you a supplementary information. Yes, a presentation uh, touched uh, well. Uh, they mentioned uh, the, uh, the uh, NARA document. I think some of you may have known already. But about 30 years ago, uh, there was a conference held in NARA uh, inviting uh, the experts from around the world. And so they discussed the authenticity of the world heritage as well as the cultural heritage. In Japanese, uh, we uh, use the word of shinsei-sei or shinji uh, for uh, uh, authenticity. Actually, there is no definitive uh, translation uh, for authenticity. So instead, we are using uh, uh, authenticity in uh, Japanese alphabet. Uh, so this indicates complexity. So specifically speaking, uh, that means that we have to think about authenticity in the cultural context of uh, each uh, country that uh, uh, the site belongs to. So this is the basic idea behind the uh, NARA document. So uh, in this respect, uh, how the, uh, the we have to explain, we have to have the, the people from overseas understand the, the history of Japan. Actually, uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, pain points for all experts, but the NARA document has given us a kind of a solution. But 30 years has passed. I think the time has come for us to make further step, further step uh, in terms of authenticity. Yes, of course, we have to uh, make efforts so that uh, Kintaikyo Bridge can be inscribed on the World Heritage, and uh, this is the earnest wish from the local community as well. But uh, we have to think about the, uh, not just uh, uh, Kintaikyo uh, uh, Bridge, but also we have to think about the way of explanation so that the people from overseas can understand uh, the authenticity of the sites in Japan. So uh, the, listening to the presentation of Kino Sipisti, I have been been able to uh, reform uh, uh, this kind of idea. So I have a question, uh, starting with the Dr. Randa. In the beginning of your keynote speech, uh, you have introduced the Venice Charter and the Barra Charter, and also NARA documents. Uh, so these documents are, are deeply related with uh, authenticity of the cultural uh, heritage. So these are the very important documents. So this information uh, you gave us. Uh, so it means, so they are thinking about uh, cultural heritage or uh, authenticity in particular. The core part may have not changed, but uh, depending on the time frame, the, the concept uh, on uh, the way of thinking about authenticity has been changing, have been e evolving. But what are the, the core elements which has not element? And uh, on the other hand, what are the elements which have been constantly changing? So it might be a difficult question for you to answer, but. Uh, I would appreciate your answer uh, for this question. Thank you. And also the question uh, going to uh, Dr. Cabeza. Uh, so based upon your experience in Chile, uh, you have uh, incited a specific example. Uh, well, uh, so uh, you have uh, given us a various uh, useful insight uh, that help us to proceed with our effort for World Health Inspiration. But you also mentioned we should be able to explain uh, uh, or better the explanation so that people from overseas can understand. So we have to prepare for documents and we have to prepare for better explanation. Uh, but one of the uh, uh, the, the beauty of the Kintakyo Bridge or Chamber Kintakyo Bridge is uh, loved by the local people and supported by uh, local people over many years. But how we can better explain, how we can convey this message uh, the, uh, uh, the Kintakyo Bridge uh, supported and loved by the local community. Uh, because the Kintakyo Bridge has become uh, the, the part of the, the, uh, the uh, daily life of the local community. Uh, so this is the most uh, difficult element or part uh, of our explanation to be given to the, the people uh, uh, overseas. How we can better explain uh, uh, we, uh, uh, to the ex 
uh, well, how we can explain, uh, excuse me, uh, the, how much we have loved uh, the Kintakyo Bridge, how much cherished uh, we cherish, how much uh, we cherish the Kintakyo Bridge. And uh, Dr. Elefteria, so you said uh, you have been involved as an evaluator on the site mission. I think this is a very valuable information uh, because uh, uh, confidentiality, uh, there is something uh, you are not able to disclose. Uh, the, therefore, I'm not asking, uh, going to ask you in great details about your uh, experience as an evaluator. Uh, however, uh, but the, uh, I have said you have given that advices uh, based upon the, the perspective as uh, uh, as an evaluator. So your advices have been very, very helpful and useful. Uh, so uh, now uh, I have a question to ask. So you also touched upon the comparative analysis. So we have to make a, a analysis uh, in comparison with other uh, World Heritage Site, uh, which is similar to Kintaikyo Bridge. But there is uh, some difficult element in terms of the comparative analysis. So, so what site we should select as an object or a subject uh, to com comparative analysis? This is the most uh, uh, difficult part of this uh, comparative analysis. So wooden bridge, you said uh, it is very rare. There is no such uh, wooden bridge uh, listed on the World Heritage Site. This is a very encouraging information. Uh, but, but, but simply because there is no such similar bridges on the World Heritage Site, well, how can you select uh, such uh, the bridge we can make a comparison? Uh, but if we just uh, select uh, uh, the bridge from the generals in general, it is also difficult to pick up one, the best one. Uh, so, but uh, how about the, the wooden bridge? But still, it's uh, it's very, there are many, many wooden bridges. So, so in terms of comparison, so how can determine the scope uh, in terms of the uh, object or subject to comparison analysis? Uh, this is the uh, uh, the, uh, the questions going to uh, Dr. Lefteura. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Dr. Nishi. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Randa, would you pl uh, please respond to uh, the question from uh, Mr. Nishi uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, the concept on or I, the way of thinking uh, about the cultural uh, heritage and also authenticity? What is changing and what is not changing? Uh, that is a question from uh, Dr. Nishi. Would you please respond to this question? Well, um, it's not easy to say what is changing, but uh, first of all, the um, character of um, both charters, the Venice Charter and the NARA document on authenticity are very different. The one of Venice Charter is, um, is a document that says what can be done and what cannot be done and guides us in one direction, and it's very clear, and it's very understandable in a certain context, in the context in which it was created, which is Venice and all the culture of that, not only that area of the world, but, but, but specifically Spain and, and, and Italy and Greece and, and the southern part of Europe, it's quite clear. Um, but when you create a law which is too strict and doesn't take into account so many different circumstances, uh, the problems arise. And that happened with the Venice Charter. So the narrow document on authenticity is, has exactly the opposite mentality, which is, let's open. It's a very short document, it's two pages. And it says very logical things. And uh, one of them is to take into account the cultural context. So authenticity has to be defined in each cultural context. Um, but it doesn't say what authenticity is. And the, even the concept of, authentici of authenticity is very different in different cultures but it has to be seeked, it has to be justified. Uh, as Dr. Nishi said, in Japan, you don't have an exact word for authenticity, so you use the English name. 
in Spain we have a very clear idea of what, what authenticity is in the common, in, in everyday life, not in heritage, in everyday life. In the Basque country also. And everyone would know what, what you're talking about when you're saying about authenticity, but no one would be able to define it clearly, not even myself. Uh, the idea is there, it's quite clear, but it's very difficult to transmit. But then we can work with it, and we can understand each other. So, that means that uh, the evolution of the concept uh, in, in, in NARA in, was quite clear, it's just be open-minded. Be open-minded and, and try to understand what each culture is doing, and each culture will define, will work, will justify authenticity within their uh, context, understanding um, cultural um, traditions. Um, but then, in NARA 2014, NARA Plus 20, we are speaking about evolving of the concept of, 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 of uh, cultural values and even the authenticity. But then <laughs> again, you cannot define what those changes have been. So in, when we worked in, in the Salt Valley of Añana, which I saw, I showed a photograph before, it's a very complex site. And even in, in, in my country, uh, people are very comfortable with the Venice Charter. They don't need NARA. They are comfortable with Venice Charter because they know what to do, they know what they cannot do, and that's it. But when I work in, in the Salt Valley of Añana, which is a site with uh, more than 6,000 years of history, 6,000 years of history, with changes, constant changes, and, and so many things that have happened, and it's a, uh, it, it's a factory of, of making salt, uh, Venice Charter didn't work. I couldn't do, we couldn't work properly with Venice Charter. So we had to learn about NARA, document on authenticity, and we wrote a book about the justification of the um, authenticity in Nanyana, and the base of everything was the NARA document on authenticity. But it was defined for this site, and it helped us a lot in, in open our mind. I think the definition of authenticity in, in, in here, in Kentucky, has to, be, has to be specific, and it needs to be worked out. We've given a few ideas, but they can be better or, or not. But it has to be worked out by the people here mm -hmm. and give a specific definition for, for this site. Thank それでは次に、えー、カベサ先生、まあ、近代教は地元の人にとってものすごいな大事な、えー、存在でもう、えー、大変大事にされて、okay. いますので、最後に質問をお願いします。最後に質問をお願いします。最後に質問をお願いします。Of the Kintaikyo Bridge, including spiritualities and feelings, to someone coming from outside. Spent a lot of money to answer it. Maybe we need another seminar to, to work about it. But I can give you some ideas. Yeah, we have 1,000 uh, wall heritage sites, and the key, the core, the heart of each one is just no more than 100 words. It is a statement of significance and how you can explain to a very broad people that include a specialist and local and politician yeah, how a place is important for everybody. And to do that, you need to work together and find something like you have done here. Yeah, because before I came here, I didn't understand very much about Kintaikyo Bridge. Right now, I have my mind and my heart open to new concepts. That's the work that Japan must make. How to explain in no more than 100 words what Kintaikyo is important 
not only for you, it's important for the world because we're talking about the World Heritage List. And this convention is looking for what aspect of every culture in different parts of the world have something to show to the future generations. And here, in Kentucky, Rich, you have something different. And something that can open narrow minds about heritage conservation. And you have to work in it. I do not know right now how to explain it, because it means a lot of work, and how to explain with scientific, but also with emotional words, what it means. Thank you very much, Dr. Zakanika. And if you were to actually look for the inscription, and a comparative analysis is required. In the case of the Kintakyo Bridge, what do we have to compare with? I think it's a very good question. First of all, you go and see what, what timber bridges are in the UNESCO list. None. What would you do? Nothing. Then, arced bridges in UNESCO list. One reconstructed stone. Then, you go to see timber arced bridges in the world. None. Of course, you have to say why. And you have done such documentation, you have done an enormous work on that, about the characteristics. Uh, Professor Koshihara is here, other scientists, other colleagues are um, here, that you have done a lot, a lot of work on, that, on this. So, uh, timber art bridges in the world, none. Then, timber bridges in Japan, why uh, Kentucky Bridge is important for Japan and different from the others? Then, timber bridges in countries that are, can, could influence you, like China. You have done al already the, a lot of work on this too, or other countries that could get influence. And then, more than this, six, uh, six timber bridges in the world. And you will, you, will, you will find out that there are not so many. So, um, and uh, this, I think it's a really good tool in order to, to, to um, highlight the importance of, of uh, the Kentucky Bridge. For, for the... I just want to say for the uh, other nomination for the churches in Poland and Ukraine, there were in po these were the Orthodox churches. In Poland, there were other uh, uh, Catholic churches, uh, timber ones, that were enlisted too. So uh, both were enlisted. Even if there are uh, other exceptional examples, it doesn't lower your own uh, effort. And also in Romania there are, uh, and in other countries, in northern countries. So uh, it, it, it is a really good tool to, to work with uh, your nomination, and in your case, is, is, uh, I think it's uh, obvious. And, and, and also I think we discussed yesterday with Angel and Mikkel that I think UNESCO, you told us, Angel, is trying to open uh, the, 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 the type of the properties that are enlisted. A lot of churches, a lot of archaeological sites, but there is only two. One stone, one metal, no timber. It's missing. There is a gap there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So far, 
amongst the uh, three international experts who are visiting uh, Iwakuni, and they all seem to agree that there is a World Heritage a type of value held by the Kintakyo Bridge. And now I would like to ask questions. The Kintakyo Bridge was rebuilt uh, quite a few times during the Med Edo period by Kakekai system, which actually makes this uh, bridge very unique. That I think that everybody can understand that. But towards the, in the 20th century, there was a major Kakekai project, one in the 1950 and the other 2002. Particularly the one made in the 1950, there was the re, a reconstruction of the uh, pier, and that there was a change of the material to be used from timber uh, to concrete. Does this potentially have some sort of an um, influence on the decision whether the bridge could be inscribed or not? And I would like to invite the international experts to share their view on this. That, that's an important question. Um, but I was going to speak about this also because uh, I, yesterday we were discussing about Kakekai and, and whether um, the um, intervention of the stone part is also kakekai, kakekai or not. And uh, I would say that the kakekai, kakekai system of Kintakyo is limited to the wooden part of the bridge because that was the plan, the original plan. The piers would be done and would last, let's say, forever. And the um, wooden part, knowing that it's far more fragile, would have to be um, taken care of in, in a certain way. And that's Kakekai. Uh, the stone piers have fallen down, if I understood well, twice in that period of time in, in 350 years. And it's been caused no, not by the rot of wood, by the decay, but by floods. So it's like it's natural disasters. That's the case of Mostar. But in Mostar, it, it was not natural, it was human caused, it was the war. But it's destruction of a, of a bridge, in this case, it's destruction of a stone part of the bridge which has not been designed to be uh, replaced, uh, redone, reconstructed. But it, when it's fallen down, you have two possibilities, well, two, probably more, but one of them is you leave it like that and you lose the bridge, which is not under discussion, and the other one is you reconstruct it. You don't have another option. So in this case, the justification could be quite similar to the one in, in Mostar. It's, it's a reconstruction, but it's a justified reconstruction. And in this context, um, the question would be, if when this happened the first time three centuries ago, if they had concrete, would, would they have used concrete? And probably the response would be, yes, they would have, because that would have caused that in 2000, uh, sorry, in 1950, there wouldn't have been probably the same damage. Can I ask that same question of the Dr. Kabetha and Dr. Tsukanika? Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to give an example yeah, that can be helped for this Kakikai system. Uh, many years ago, UNESCO uh, asked for every country that have a World Heritage Site to have a management plan. And right now, to be in the list 
you have to present a management plan or result. Before it was just one page. Right now, maybe they are a little more bigger and wait more. Yeah. But they have to change that concept. Yeah? Because some countries, especially in natural areas, and in some cases in cultural sites, there was a system of management held by centuries by the people. So what we are doing right now is just written yeah, that system of management and not to have a new plan of management. We are recognizing what they have done. In the case of the Kakae, maybe there is another Kakae in Africa, in Asia, or in Latin America. I do not know. Maybe in this case we are open yeah, a new aspect of the concept of the conservation, management, and restoration. So I don't say that this is a Japanese way to do it, but maybe yeah, there is in other countries yeah, or regions something very similar that we have not discovered yet. And maybe this case can open yeah, a way to find a new concept of restoration and maintenance. What you have done here is very, very important because destroy, you make a new design, you improve because you understand what happened, what the problems, and you don't have that problem come again, and you have reinforcement, yeah, the, the, the bridge. And just you start to written this. Yeah. Maybe in other countries, they don't written, but they have memories about their local carpenters, how to do it and how to improve it. So I think that this case can open something very new. Thanks. カウセンセアリガトウザイマスそれはザカニカ先生いかがでしょうかドクターザカニカ the exceptional part. Of course, inside a timber arc does not stand on the air, it's standing on foundations. Um, as I said in my presentation, we can consider this as a, a, a reinforcement of the era that we're living, as they did in 1699, putting the diagonal elements with wood in order to reinforce uh, their structure. Um, there, there is an argument. I mean, it, it, it is possible. Somebody could say why in, in the not not the foundation. The foundation, um, I think, is not possible to was not possible to be reinforced with other ways uh, efficiently. Concrete is 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 is, uh, is is a good choice. Is a suitable choice anyway. The only thing that there could be a question would be about the area of the support of the timber arc. Somebody could say that in this area you could put back the granite, this very strong uh, stone in between the two arches, and uh, not use the metal um, plate. This could be an argument about uh, this area, but the concrete at the rest of the part, I think, due to the flood and the um, problems that causes in the foundation of the bridges, of, of, the, pre, of the piers, is, is, is difficult. Takanika Sensei and Kabisa Sensei, thank you very much uh, for your uh, valuable insights. Now I would like to hear uh, the further comments uh, from the uh, or uh, questions from Dr. Okada and Dr. Nishi. So, yeah, yeah you touched upon uh, the concrete uh, structure. So, in any way, so uh, the, uh, uh, the World Heritage. Uh, 
So have uh, some uh, relevance to uh, uh, the concrete. So when it comes to authenticity and the relevance, and so, so I cannot say that. So uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the use of concrete is uh, permitted, but, but then so. However, I think uh, there is uh, the minority of uh, uh, the, the the sites or properties uh, which are reinforced uh, by the uh, the materials other than uh, concrete. So my question is the key word uh, of Venice Charter, Charter uh, Venetian Charter. Uh, the Dr. Takanika uh, touched upon a little, uh, about to touch upon a little, and uh, probably so. I would like to just uh, uh, the visit the. Uh, uh, anesthesis uh, in Venice uh, Charter, and uh, I would like to yes uh, explain a little bit uh, more about the anesthesis. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Takanika, and uh, so could you explain a little bit about anesthesis? And so, because we would like to know a little bit more about it. Yes, uh, especially Parthenon and all these incredible uh, classical monuments is not my expertise. I'm uh, uh, more in timber um, and uh, uh, very important scientists and committees are working for this. Uh, it's not just one. It, uh, it's a group of people that uh, make the study and then the ministry uh, has committees that uh, are checking and discussing the studies and things are not so um, easy and um, uh, one way. Uh, anastylosis is, um, we use it, let's say, for the case of the Parthenon when, uh, um, or for classical or Roman monuments is a very common uh, practice of um, uh, working with them when uh, several elements have gone down and you put them back in, in, in their place. But um, uh, not necessarily for reconstruction, but a partial, uh, not reconstruction, putting, taking elements that are laying down, recognize them and put them back in finding where is the original place and put them, them back. So this is more the cases of, uh, of classical and Roman monuments that uh, are not intact. In other cases, uh, we use the uh, uh, restoration uh, concept when we have to um, have a, 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 an object, a, a building that has to be fully uh, put it back in use, fully restored, fully repaired or reinforced. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Dr. Nishi and so the, the uh, two kakekae, so which took place uh, more than 50 years ago and which took place in a recent history. If you like to add some more comments or uh, questions, uh, please add them. So, uh, so uh, not a question. However, so I have rec received a lot of uh, inputs. So, based on uh, their input, I think I would like to uh, think further about uh, this issue. And, for example, uh, there are so many uh, bridges and structures, and so there are some partial uh, the repairs or reconstruction or renewal, and so. So all those, you know, interventions may have some uh, reasons to it, and so whether that is good or bad, and but those are not the old ones. So therefore, so in many uh, cases, uh, when we uh, make uh, some preparations for the documents for uh, the candidate uh, uh, properties, and so we are uh, always yes uh, uh, discussing uh, for, so getting ready for uh, some uh, 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 challenging questions and sometimes so uh, those uh, assumed questions uh, have not been asked and then unassumed questions suddenly pop up and then we were not really prepared and so therefore it's uh, 
So we really wanted to know beforehand what is going to be a contentious issue and what is going to be asked. And so we would like to prepare some uh, yes, uh, answers with uh, some justifications. So therefore, so it is a great opportunity for us to receive inputs uh, from international perspectives because domestic views alone may not be able to help us. And so. So the uh, so the input uh, that we have received uh, today so uh, will be further digested uh, among us and so how to present uh, uh, the justification uh, will be further uh, revised and improved I think thank you thank you very much now so there's another uh, question that we have uh, t uh, to ask uh, the, uh, uh, the three experts. So in order to improve the value of a Kintai Kyo bridge, do you have any good uh, yes, uh, ideas uh, or method? Improve the authenticity. They improve the value. The value. I don't know if... I think this is a question that needs to be thought out and, and probably discussed later. Not not like that, a, because it's not an easy one. Easy one. I would like to, if you allow me, to make two comments. One of them is regarding uh, the concept of minimum intervention. I know that in the Wood Committee of e-commerce uh, we are working on that, and uh, it. Um, concept that it's on the principles that were approved in 2017 and it's an interesting exercise to formulate what minimum intervention um, is in each in each case in each uh, heritage site and sometimes it's easier to to formulate concept and other times is more difficult. I think this one might be quite, quite challenging. Uh, how do we, it's more a question than a reflection. What, how, how could we um, define minimum intervention in Kintakio? Is it related to the minimum changes to the plan, to the original plan? And uh, another another topic, which is the comparative analysis, maybe uh, there is a bridge in Peru which is built and, and disassembled every year. It's made with cord. It's World Heritage, but it's on the intangible side. I don't know if that could be could help on the comparative analysis. Maybe it should be included and analyzed. And the other one is that. Uh, um, adding information to what uh, uh, Professor Tsaganika has said. Uh, there, there are many wooden bridges in the world, in certain places of the world, the USA, Canada, some of them in Europe, but in the, in the central Europe. But most of them, or probably all of them, are, have a roof, which is a um, difference, which is a relevant difference, uh, difference compared to Kintaikyo. And maybe that could be also included on the comparative analysis why those bridges have roofs and why having a roof means that, and not only, be, not, not only because of that, but, but it means that there's no kakekai in USA, there's no kakekai in the bridges in Canada because uh, the concept is different. Uh, thank you very much. And Dr. Kabesa? Yesterday, in our meeting, but they will insist in that. You are focused too much, and it's good, in a, about material aspect of the bridge, in architect and engineering. You must do that. But you don't have to forget that the UNESCO have 10 criteria, six criteria for cultural sites, four for natural sites, and criteria number six is about intangible aspects of the cultural sites. And in this case, 
is very important, as much important as technical aspects, yeah, the spiritual aspect and the belief of the people yeah, so uh, by, by the bridge. Because in most cases that we declare cultural sites are archaeological sites and their function and use finish. We have it and we look it for tourist information and so on, or for scientific or archaeological sites. But here you have a living monument using every day, connecting the city and also connecting different generations, the past but also its future, and you're using every day. So I think that I listen to you, you are, you are using for a file nomination about two or three criteria, but I will insist that you have to put criteria number six, because in many cases in the last years, yeah, criteria number six yeah, give the power, the political interest, yeah, because behind that is the community. Thank you very much. Uh, though, uh, how about uh, Dr. Saganega? What is your thought? Uh, I think, again, on the same way, concerning the intangible values, uh, we are more focused on the tangible part. But in this case, you have so many intangible values together with the tangible that can really support the absence of the material you have the spirit of the material. You don't have the, the, the material. And sometimes the absence could be interesting. What I would like, I, I think you could focus more and um, uh, work more is about this uh, um, documentation. I mean, the drawings, the templates, and the rulers is only this by its own. It's, a, it's an incredible um, feature of this case, and it is... Com it, it is connected um, uh, directly with the, the Kakekai system and the, and, and, the, and the main characteristics of the bridge. Through this, you can do that. And I think by its own, it can consist a very, a very important value. I think yesterday, uh, Professor Okada said that I fully agree. Uh, it, is, it could be also part of the memory of the world. And, uh, uh, also, it is a unique documentation system that does not exist nowhere. If you, and I think if you try to make a comparative analysis on which properties have this kind of documentation, I think, I don't know how many you will find also. So I think one of the most strong values that you have is the drawings made from samurai, I mean, engineer samurai of the 17th century, are, are, are unique. So, um, and that's the point that, uh, and they continue to every time to ha you have so many. And also, it, they tell you a story about the process of the building, not only the building. It's also very interesting, the process of the reconstruction, how it is done, how quickly, even, um, how it, it, it has special values, all this, connected with the local community, with the history, with the evolution of the city, with many, many, many things. I think this, this should be more um, highlighted and um, researched on this. Thank you very much for your valuable advice. And Dr. Ad, Ad, uh, Okada and Dr. Nishi, do you have uh, some additional comments uh, or questions? Well, uh, yes, I, this is Okada speaking. And uh, so as uh, Dr. Kabesa has uh, uh, shared with us his uh, view, uh, but the spirituality of uh, Kentaikyo, uh, I think this is a kind of uh, abstract uh, uh, part of the characteristics. And if you'd like to be more specific about the spirituality of uh, Kentaikyo, that would be more helpful. So if uh, so, we are going to use criteria number six that uh, you pr proposed. And uh, so in the uh, the, the ex uh, committee uh, within uh, our 
uh, this uh, the domestic uh, community, we have not uh, touched upon uh, criteria number six. And so uh, how uh, can we propose uh, the uh, King Taikyo uh, as uh, the candidate uh, site? So probably uh, the Dr. Nishi may be able to share with us some thoughts. And so the criteria, so I think uh, so Dr. Nishi may be able to explain a little bit more about the criteria that we are going to use. Thank you. So the Kintaike has the uh, intangible and uh, tangible aspects. Uh, the both aspects are very important. So uh, this is the common understanding among the uh, Japanese experts. In particular, intangible aspect, intangible element, for example, uh, so carpentry techniques uh, that supports the kakekae and uh, various uh, kinds of uh, traditional uh, uh, technology and the knowledges uh, included as uh, intangible uh, elements. Uh, but these are uh, 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 what we have already uh, highlighted already. Uh, but uh, Dr. Uh, Kapeta uh, 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 said we should uh, uh, more uh, put a focus on the spirituality, uh, but uh, spirituality, uh, Dr. Kapita uh, is uh, talking about, is uh, quite dif uh, a little bit different from uh, uh, from uh, traditional techniques or the carpentry uh, intangible aspect we have already focused on. Would you uh, please give us more specific idea about the spirituality you were talking about? I think that that is a question for another seminar. <laughs> but I can give you some uh, ideas. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we have the Intangible Heritage Convention, 2003. And in those pages, it's very clear what we have to look for. But we don't have to forget that criteria number six is not working alone. Criteria number six is about intangible aspect to give more importance to the material aspects of the cultural sites. Yeah? It's not working alone. Some two cases last year, it worked alone, but there are very special cases in Rwanda, the killing fields of Rwanda, the Civil War, and also in uh, Argentina because of human rights. They, those sites were inscribed only for criteria number six. But the normal of criteria number six about intangible aspect is to give more uh, comprehension of the values of the cultural sites, tangible sites. And there are many ways to work that. But what I have seen here, that, that I didn't see it in the, in the papers, or because I didn't study very well and look for the internet, that here you have all that already, because the bridge is a living bridge. It's not a bridge of picture or photographs. Yeah? It's not a ruin. It's not an archaeological site. It's something that we use very days, all days. We have seen school boys and children going and back. We have seen tourists. We have seen people that work the other side of the city crossing. Uh, so this is uh, a bridge that, I, that is alive. And also we have seen drawings. We have seen yeah, young people making drawings in the schools. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, we have very many poetry or poems about this bridge. Maybe you have very many uh, songs. And sometimes maybe you have uh, dances that the bridge, uh, the bridge is part very important. Because what I have seen here, that in everything, even when you give us this thing, you have the bridge. In everywhere is the bridge. It's a symbol of the city. So what we have to do, what we have to do is how to explain this, to give more values to the tangible heritage. Alejandro. Yes, so in order to enhance the value of the Kintaikyo as a cultural value of the Kintaikyo, what should we do? Do you have any idea, Mr. Dr. Nishi or Dr. Takanika? Do you have any additional comment? Alejandro, 
Uh, I was um, thinking when uh, Angel was speaking, it's, you have an, uh, an incredible, um, so many paintings, uh, and old ones for, for the bridge, which is also a very rare case in other, in other uh, inscriptions. The, the paintings, not only in the schools, but uh, where we saw in the museum, an extremely big collection that you can have uh, also a museum for them. This, is, this could be also um, an interesting uh, uh, value for the, this sixth, uh, part, sixth, sixth criteria. And may, you may have also other things that we don't know, only like poetry or literature or whatever, uh, connected with the bridge. ありがとうございます。と、西先生何かコメントか質問ありますでしょうか。Dr. Nishi, do you have any comments? To uh, complete, I uh, fully agree with uh, Lefteria and with Angel, uh, but uh, and, and I, I think that it's very relevant, uh, the, the intangible side here. Kakekae is intangible, and it helps explain the bridge. ありがとうございます。Dr. Nishi? So this is not a question. Uh, so there's, uh, 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 there's something that does make sense to me uh, listening to the comments from international experts. So the key was uh, the uh, bridge, uh, tangible, and then uh, intangible that support uh, the, the Kintai Bridge, uh, various kinds of a system, and then the, uh, the sense, the feeling of the local community which uh, cherished the, the bridge or social element, and also festival is also included in intangible aspect. So uh, we have to have uh, uh, the system to protect the both the tangible, intangible. In this respect, Japan has been regarded uh, as a country which has quite advanced in protecting both elements, intangible, uh, uh, tangible. But uh, aside from uh, this uh, point, uh, the discussion how we uh, we should link you uh, uh, intangible, uh, tangible. Uh, we had a discussion, I think it's quite decades ago, uh, there was a conference, the Yamato conference, uh, where we had a discussion. So uh, there is a, a definitive successful uh, uh, method, uh, but uh, we uh, d did have a discussion. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, uh, this uh, kind of a linking, uh, intangible and tangible, has not been uh, discussed uh, frequently, uh, even at the uh, uh, World Heritage Committee meeting, but then, uh, uh, but uh, I think people know that the uh, this uh, you have to have a sense of ownership in protecting and and keeping the bridge. Uh, but the uh, so this how we should uh, link the tangible intangible. This kind of a point should be raised uh, uh, to the international uh, uh, the, uh, community. Uh, uh, but uh, once uh, we uh, uh, call upon the, any idea about how we can uh, better uh, protect the both aspect, uh, then there may be uh, so many responses uh, 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 coming to us. Uh, but the, uh, but uh, what I like to uh, mean, why I mean is that uh, Kintaikyo has uh, such potential uh, to uh, help us uh, uh, they have a discussion uh, in linking tangible intangible. So we are running out of time, but uh, there's one more last question I would ask to both the Japanese and international expert. Uh, today, uh, we have many uh, local people uh, in, in the audience, uh, in the floor. Uh, so for those uh, local community or people uh, of uh, local community, how uh, uh, can they be how are they be able to support uh, our candidature for World Heritage in the future? Well, what kind of support uh, we, uh, the, the local community should uh, give us uh, uh, to uh, those who have been engaged in the, uh, the candidature for World Heritage uh, inscription? So, uh, Dr. Uh, Kabula, would you uh, 
give us your comment. So the activities by local community. I have Do you want me to stay here? I have to leave tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, what happened in other countries is that they have not only scientific or specialist teams to work on the nomination file. At the same moment that the experts are working, they create yeah, local committees about the local population interest uh, in the, in, in the have a voice in the, the file. So this is a process that is helped to the file, but also help to uh, uh, raise the interest and the knowledge about the, the heritage. And it has been very helpful in many, many places. Yeah, you have to work with the community always, especially because we are working about their heritage. That heritage not belong to us, to some experts. That belong to the people. Um, Dr. Landa, please. Yes, I think what the people can do with this is continue with the plan. They've been doing it for 350 years and simply continue with the plan. The, um, things that, or, or activities that, that usually are uh, carried out in these situations, raising awareness among the population, participation, that's already being done. I mean, people here is quite aware they love the place, they know the place, they teach and learn the place, the, the, the bridge, in the schools. Um, they, they need to keep doing it. Well, what about the carpentry school? For training carpenters? Um, it, it, it is... Um, in, in, when I was reading your work and uh, your studies, uh, I was fascinated by how often this kakekai system is. So it is two or three times in the light, lifetime of, of a carpenter, every 20 years, about 20, 30 years, at least the previous years. So having, having this bridge, this unique case, um, and having all this tradition, I, I would suggest, and since I, I understood that there are not many carpenters uh, f from here, I mean from Iwakuni, um, I would uh, suggest uh, to, to make a, a carpentry school for training carpenters. And also the carpentry courses in the school, I mean preliminary schools. It's so, when we saw what, what you do with the models, the big ones and the smaller ones, and how easy it is to do that, because the system is easy to, to make it and work like a toy. Uh, I think you could have uh, this expanded, not only using models of, of the, the bridge, but using models of other timber structures uh, that um, could uh, the, the, the school uh, uh, boys and girls could work on, or even in real construction, in, in, in real carpentry. The, you, uh, I have seen schools in other countries with uh, children uh, younger age to, to work with uh, the tools, and maybe you already have them, I don't know, but in, in here it, it has another meaning because carpenters are, are working continuously like this since um, 350 years. So that would be my suggestion because, as, as Mikkel said, you uh, have done many, many things already concerning education and training of the schools and uh, the, the local community. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We're now working towards the listing as New World Heritage. Well, 
In fact, I would imagine the journey is not going to be short, so long rather. Even if we are successful in enlisting, that is not the end of our journey. We have to preserve and conserve the bridge, to which could live up to the World Heritage value. In, the, in that journey, the participation and involvement of the local community is an essential element. I oftentimes have an opportunity to work with the local communities in other areas. And once their heritage is listed or inscribed on the World Heritage List, that certainly enhanced their understanding and awareness of what they have as a heritage. And once you're listed, it is very likely that your area will receive more visitors from outside Japan. So it certainly generates a quite a positive impact in economic terms through tourism. And I understand there are many uh, from the city government are here with us in the conference. And there's a very strong leadership of the mayor, Fukuda, in this initiative. But one, when the listing is successful, I think this kind of the setup or the momentum is, will be necessary. While it's a lot of work on the part of the city government, but it is necessary. It requires the constant input of the human resources who can actually handle the management and management of the World Heritage Site. And of course, that listing would enhance the economic and development and the revitalization of the community, which I think is a very good thing to see. And there's an issue about a parking lot. And people, some people would find it very inconvenient. So people would find it is very inconvenient if they don't have the parking areas where they are now. But that's something you have to cope with if you were to actually put your bridge on the list. Dr. N Dr. Nishi, please. Well, support from not only from the local Iwakuni people, but also the, from the much wider areas is necessary for us to actually follow this journey. And from the point of view of the national government like me, and I always, we always think that what would be the good ways to motivate them in a constant manner. And I'm wondering what kind of impression the audience today have been having listening to all the speakers upon the stage. You may, they may find it a bit difficult to understand, but this is the opportunity for us to actually to understand that if we were to work towards the World Heritage Enlisting, we have to actually expose ourselves to new ideas and new approaches and to the issues to be addressed. And of course, the local community is not the only one, but also that is true with the uh, local government and the pe person like me from the as a, as a central government. But in, like myself, that we tend to actually bury ourselves in the ideas of world heritage. And it requires a lot of readings as well. And sometimes you, for, you forget uh, to put yourself outside of the box and I forget that it is also just as important that you communicate the value and the significance of the heritage to the wider population.
Thank you so very much. And we have now exposed to various um, opinions and views and perspectives through the conference. Uh, to conclude, I would like to ask Dr. Landa uh, to deliver a kind of the concluding remarks, not, to, not only about this conference today, but also the past two and a half days you have spent in Iwakuni. Dr. Landa, please. Thank you. Arigato, uh, Alejandro. Uh, well, it's been, I think I can speak, we all three will, would agree if I say that it's been uh, three wonderful days, uh, unexpected. I mean, uh, we are grateful, grateful to the, um, we are honored by the invitation. It's a unique occasion to work in an extraordinary site. It's really extraordinary. Uh, we have enjoyed the bridge, the landscape, the city, but mainly the people here, the Japanese people. We felt so uh, comfortable. Um, it's been amazing, it's an, it's an experience. Um, but we have known some of the secrets of the, the bridge. Uh, but mainly we have learned. I don't know if we have helped or not. We have tried, but we have learned a lot. Uh, Angel says that every day we learn something. So first day there was some idea, and the second one, another one. I think we've learned that and m much more. Um, Kentucky is a special site the way in which for 350 years the society of Iwakuni has conserved, cared, used, lived and enjoyed has, is the reason why the bridge is still alive today in perfect condition. And it's a guarantee that it will be so in the future, if the society uh, is involved with the bridge, the bridge will, will still be there. And we'll thank all of you, all of us, with its beauty, with its... Um, I was going to speak about Kakekae, but I think we have spoken quite a lot about that. And uh, we, yeah, I think, keep to the plan. Continue doing it well, which is fantastic. Uh, Kintei Kiyo is exceptional and has to be recognized as such, so there's a work to do. Um, it has to be well explained, but it will be done. It will be done, but, so um, go ahead with it. And to finish, uh, thank you for the um, confidence that you have put on us. Uh, thank you to the institutions, to the experts, the Japanese expert, to the organizers, and to the translators for your hard work these days. Thank you so much. It's been a honor and a pleasure. Thank you. There were some words. Well, actually, it's a pity that we have to draw the symposium to a close. And thank you also very much, all the, all the prominent panelists. Thank you very much, Dr. Martinez, and all the distinguished panelists. Please give them another big round of applause. To conclude the symposium, we have Vice Chair of the Kintaikyo Bridge, World Heritage Registration Promoter Council, Mayor of Iwakuni City, Yoshihiko Fukuda, to make closing remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, today, 
is in the air marking the 350th anniversary of that uh, bridge. We're holding this very important symposium, which gives me a great pleasure. I would like to offer my sincerest appreciation to Dr. Landa, Mikel Landa and Dr. Angel Cabeza and Dr. Elefteria Tsakanika and also to Professor Okada and Dr. Nishi. Thank you. And also my appreciation goes to that um, Dr. Martinez Alejandro, who actually coordinated a very activated um, discussion. Well, I was listening to the, uh, trans uh, the translation device, and there were many technical terms involved in the uh, presentation, but uh, our translators worked very hard, and my appreciation goes to them too. The first uh, keynote speech delivered, given by Dr. Landa, and that was about uh, the authenticity or the authenticity of the Kintaikyo Bridge viewed from an international perspective. Authenticity has been discussed for some, t some years, and today we have actually sort of learned the uh, international perspective of the authenticity which is related to the Kintaikyo Bridge. And now I, fe I feel that we sort of see a kind of a light, a guiding light uh, towards our destination. And Dr. Cabeza uh, gave us a lot. I mean, uh, gave us a lot of implication and insights in that how to actually work together with the local community in a journey to the listing. Kintaikyo Bridge has experienced the Kakekae as of several times in the past during the 350 years, but that doesn't, it didn't really compromise the elegant design, which blended blends into the surrounding landscape such uh, carpenters like Okikawa or Ebisaki and their forerunners actually did their best to preserve uh, that uh, reality today. And for the future, it is our responsibility uh, to reserve or to conserve this uh, bridge as is. And as was expressed by uh, the panelist, the bridge is the part of our daily life. And the bridge is something which always find a moral support in our lives. So there are things we have to actually uh, cope with. And also, but we would like to actually keep the Ayaza bridge as our treasure for the years to come. And in that sense, we had a lot of implications from the other uh, uh, panelists like Dr. Tsakaneka, uh, Professor Okada, and the Dr. Nishi. I appreciate their uh, support and cooperation. I also ask for their continued support. We um, have uh, very happy to have the international experts. Also, that we've been always greatly supported by uh, the experts and non-experts who have all involved in our efforts towards the listing of the bridge on the World Heritage List. And to last, to end, I would like to ask for your continued support for the years to come. Thank you. With this, I, I conclude uh, the International Symposium on the Kintaku Bridge as a World Heritage Site. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.